Welcome to the video guys, in what seems to be a repeat pattern every week now, the SMP, namely Ian Blackford and Nicola Sturgeon are being ridiculed by multiple people both this side of the border and over on their side, including former SNP chiefs. Now in what is a surprise to absolutely none of you, they are being ridiculed for their Diane Abbott level of economics, their rudeness and of course their EU loving which we have called out on this channel many times before. Well it seems it's reached a peak today with four articles on them all coming from the express so we'll take a brief look at a couple of them and the headlines of the others. The first one we have here is of Ian Blackford being ridiculed in the commons after he refused to sit down and was called extremely rude by the speaker while being heckled by Tory MPs. But before we get into that remember the channel's daily live streams have moved over to Twitch so if you want to come and join me over there to chat in real time the link will be down in the video description as always. But back to the SM MP and this article on Ian Blackford which we won't bother going through because my explanation of it a few moments ago was essentially all you needed to know. As per usual this utter toss pot is acting like the snivelling shit weasel we all know him to be. But we will take a look at this article here that is absolutely destroying Ian Blackford and is coming from an ex SMP party chief. It headlines SMPs Ian Blackford humiliated by ex-party chief over belief Brussels will save Scotland. Which is something we have laughed at many times before because that is what the SMP actually believe. SMPs Ian Blackford has been ignoring a key element of the European Union structure in the belief the Brussels bloc would save Scottish working people from austerity claimed former deputy leader Jim Sillers. Now you only have to look at the 10 years of austerity we've just been through that Labour and the SNP have all moaned about to know the EU do not stop austerity on the working class people. But obviously like I've said the SNP went to the Diane Abbott School of Mathematics so what can you expect? Mr Sillers told Express.co.uk that Ian Blackford, the SNP's Westminster leader, is a prime example of how Sturgeon's colleagues are deluded in their belief the Brussels bloc could save working class people in Scotland from austerity. Well, at least his former SNP chief is right in his claim that they are deluded and, of course, their belief in the Brussels bloc is equally deluded. He said, well, one of the ironies is that my colleagues in the Scottish National Party keep on and Ian Blackford is a classic example of this in the House of Commons, saying, we need to go back into the European Union to safeguard the interests of working people. The fact of the matter is that the only safeguard that the working people had were torn up by the European Union's troika in Spain, Italy, Greece and Portugal. This is one of the stream's things, you know, the SNP seems to be unable to realise. No, they realise realize it they just don't care their masters are in Brussels not the people of Scotland as we already know. The northern part of the European Union oppressed the southern part of the European Union and created austerity there rather than assisting them out of economic difficulties. And the rest of the article there is literally just Ian Blackford moaning about devolution in Scotland which we've already covered in a previous video. Now there is also something here that has come out once again that I've actually covered in a video before and that is Nicola Sturgeon's plan to give every working age Scot 11 grand a year under a universal basic income scheme. Which obviously she has been called out for, this time from her own economic advisor. Expensive distraction. Sturgeon's own advisor mocks plan to hand Scots 11k a year. Nicola Sturgeon's economic advisor hit out her plans to pay 11 grand a year to working age Scots under a new universal basic income scheme. First Minister Nicola Sturgeon has backed the scheme which would see every citizen provided with guaranteed payments no matter what their circumstances are. Miss Sturgeon said of UBI, I am a supporter of it. I have long been interested in the concept. I think the case for it has been immeasurably strengthened by the crisis we're living through now. But Benny Higgins, who helped to produce a recent report on how the Scottish economy should recover from COVID-19, said the scheme would be an expensive distraction, which is obviously all the SNP are about, as we already know. He told the Herald, my personal conclusion at the moment is that we've really got to use all of our resources to get people back to work, rather than support them out of work. I think therefore this isn't the time to prioritise a universal basis.
basic income because there is never a time for that, let me tell you. I'd rather we use all our resources to get Scotland back to work because that's the common sense thing to do, but if you're a Marxist shit weasel like this snivelling tosspot is here, then that is what you get. A Scottish government study recommended the Scots are paid 11 grand a year as part of a £186 million experiment. The study revealed that this could take place as part of a three-year pilot by the Scottish and UK governments alongside local authorities. No, it can't. It's our tax money they're using. I say hell no, as do many others. Four councils, including in Edinburgh, Glasgow, Fife and North Ayrshire, worked on the research for two years with NHS Health Scotland, now part of Public Health Scotland. The Scottish government said that a three-year pilot will provide a better understanding of how income could impact on poverty, employment, health and financial well-being. SNP MP Douglas Chapman, who represents West Fife, back calls for the scheme after submitting a written question to the Department for Work and Pensions. It revealed that one million worth of universal credit advance payments were issued in each constituency between March 1st and June 16, 2310, amid signs of increasing unemployment due to the coronavirus. He added to the Courier, the Scottish Government currently does not have the power to implement one, and it never should. The UK Government needs to either transfer the power to Holyrood or introduce the system nationwide to make sure everyone has a guaranteed income and no one is left behind by this crisis. No, they really do not. However, Holyrood does not have the powers to introduce a universal basic income on its own because the majority of welfare and tax responsibilities are still reserved to Westminster where they should be. And obviously, following on from what we spoke about regarding to Ian Blackford and his love affair with the EU, Nicola Sturgeon has also been called out by rebels of the party for her love affair with the European Union that would make Scotland an independent nation only to rejoin the EU as its vassal state. Nicola Sturgeon has courted the EU's most prominent figures in her attempts to take an independent Scotland into the bloc, but an SNP rebel once criticised his party's love affair with Brussels, as you should, if you are really a nationalist, let's be honest, you shouldn't really want to be joining the European Union after you get independence that you claim you've been fighting for for years. Now obviously we don't need to go through this article, the headline is enough, because it essentially says exactly the same as it did in the Ian Blackford article, it's like they essentially just copy and pasted it over here with her name instead of his. But it really goes to show just how deluded the SNP are, not just on economic matters, but also on the matter of their independence or vassalage to the European Union, whichever way you want to look at it, to the point where former SNP chiefs are actually calling them out on it now, because I suppose it is getting ridiculous, and I guess it is rather embarrassing to the real nationalists in Scotland who actually want an independent Scotland, not the vassal state of the European Union, as I have said. There is a pattern consistent throughout history of oppressed people turning on the oppressors, slaves against their owners, the peasantry against the feudal barons, colonies, Mr. Verhofstadt, against their empires. <laughs> and that is why Britain is leaving. And it doesn't matter which language you use, we are going and we are glad to be going. We're off. <laughs>